Oh, okay, alright. Back with Armor Warfare, and this is not going to be a gameplay video. This is going to be titled Ammo and Armor. Because, well, most people seem to. Most people here are going to be from World of Tanks. And in World of Tanks, you have this kind of setup, I think. You have your AP, your Heat, and your HE. Or your premium rounds. And you, basically, this is your World of Tanks setup. And, most, and I feel like that's how most people are playing the game, but they don't realize that which armor is the fire, which... And that's basic, and that works in low tier games, but there are a lot more things in that. Different rounds affect different armors, and there's a lot more than just AP, Heat, and HE. And you're thinking, yeah, there's AP, CR, er, yes, and no, but there's still more. So... These are your simplified, which is the T-54, very simplified vehicles. AP rounds are just your AP rounds. You're, you're not really going to encounter this, eight regular AP rounds on very many vehicles, because it's an old concept and was very quickly after World War II, you don't really see it anymore. Now, what we can do, and as you see here, our AP. Now see, your PT-76 upgrades here, we can get you, because you have HVAP. There. HVAP. HVAP is your APCR, basically. HVAP is... It's armor piercing, but it penetrates more. And it's faster. It should be faster. Yep, it's faster. That's why it's high velocity... Ar it's high velocity armor piercing. So it's a faster AP round. As you can see, this one goes 1,200. This one goes 1,500. What much faster. And then heat heat is very slow. Heat and HE are both very slow. There, let's confirm that. We're just using that for demonstration purposes. Now heat is heat. It's very it's pretty it's good for vehicles that have just regular steel armor. Like you can shoot heat at the front of a T fifty four and it should go in here. Maybe your upper plate, depending on how good your heat is, and the turret. Maybe not the turret, because heat actually does worse versus rounded armor. Like the M48 Patton. Heat, heat needs flat surfaces. Basically. So, shoot heat. You should be shooting heat at T-54s and AP at M48 Pattons. And the gist of it, you still have to aim for the weaker parts of the armor. Down here, down here. Turret hatch. Whoa, that's weird. Alright then. So, and to reassure yourself this, we can go to the details. M48 pen just has steel armor. Which is 1 on 1. These modifiers in the armor mean that it's 1 to 1. And if it's a... If it's one, is your basic. If it's one, that means that the, that's the exact amount. Like here, hull, 110, and it's a one modifier. So it's basically 110 versus every armor. So you can technically shoot heat at M48 pen, but I wouldn't advise it. It will work, but it won't work very, very well. Mm. Alright, so if we go to the T-54, it should... Say steel. See one to one. It's all one to one. As you can see, these are bare. Now you already know. You know HP, AP. What should we do now? And you got your AP rounds. Yeah, you know, heat. Yeah, you know, like your regular world of tanks. And then, well, you get up in the tiers, and you start, and you get to the T62, and you're like, what's AP FTS? AP, FD, AP FDS and some tanks have it AP DS or basically even better AP rounds. They're super fast as you can well, they should be super fast. They're very high penetration and they deal actually basically just better AP rounds. Now there is one oddball at least so far and that's with the M48 patent stock ammo. 
And that is, as you can see here, 90 millimeter APC. You're thinking, what's APC? APC is armor piercing capped. It's basically an armor piercing round that happens to have an explosive tip. If it doesn't penetrate, it do it does HE dam it does HE damage. So this is a round. It will do damage no matter what. It's not going to do very much damage if you don't penetrate, but I means as you can see, damage penetrating. 188 to 229. Damage non-penetrating, it will do up to 152. From 30, 31 to 152. So, and its penetration is not very high. At 11. So, I think that's actually wrong. So we know, we, want, we don't know. And, there's even more. You think, oh, well, AG, and so... We'll go to the scorpion. Well, you won't go into auto cannons yet. As you can see, you're thinking, well, that's HE. What is this? This is Hesh. High explosive squash head. High explosive squash head and high explosive, or HEP in some vehicles, they're the same thing. They're high explosive, but it's more concentrated. So, this is, it deals less damage than regular HE. As you can see, damage penetrating up to 300. Compared to regular HE, damage penetrating 356, penetration 11, penetration 10, about the same, but HESH is actually slightly better than AP, even though it deals less damage. Why? Because it deals more module damage. Meaning that you won't penetrate, even if, if you don't penetrate, you'll deal damage and you have a higher chance to knock out someone's module, which is very good. Now, what else do we have? We'll move on to auto cannons. Auto, because auto cannons. Let's buy you real quick. I mean, there's a whole slew of ammo types. Like artillery has its own ammo types, and I'm just going over some basic stuff. If we go to the LAV 150. You see API and HEI. You're thinking, what are these rounds? These are incendiary rounds. Incendiary rounds, yes, they light stuff on fire. Or they have a higher chance to light stuff on fire, basically. If they pen these, if they penetrate, will have a higher chance of setting stuff on fire, as these do not. I mean, these will set stuff on fire, but they don't penetrate as much because they're high explosives as you can see in upgrades, is that you actually lose the ability to fire those API rounds. Well, you don't lose them, but if we go to the 25mm, yeah, you, you do lose the ability to fire the API rounds. And you're thinking, what? I lose the ability to set people on fire with my AP rounds? Yes and no. I mean, you get better regular AP rounds, so you sacrifice your fire abilities. And what the fire abilities of those rounds do is they do more module damage. So it's sort of like Hesh, in a way. Now, this is APDS, which is like APFDS, except it's not, it's not thin, so it's not technically as accurate. That's how it worked in real life. Now, the LAV-150 is very unique. And then when you upgrade to the 25mm up from the 20, you get the creme de la creme of rounds. The semi-armor piercing high explosive incendiary. You're thinking semi-armor piercing? Yes. It's sort of like a combination of your API and HEI rounds. It has pretty high penetration for an autocannon and it's HE so you can shoot this if you penetrate that's great you'll deal up to 35 damage. If you don't penetrate you can deal up to 23 damage. So these rounds are very good. And then, top it off, you get even better AP rounds, but these aren't very useful whenever you can f fire these. Sometimes. You're thinking, what? Some what do you mean by sometimes? Well, mainly when the LAV-150 has a unique type of armor. If we go into details, we have Cataloy Steel. 
You're thinking, cat alloy steel? Yes, it's like steel, but it's, it's better. I mean, you only have seven millimeters of armor, but you have that seven times, it's 106, 1.65. So if you take seven times 1.65, that'll be seven times 1.65 is, according to this calculator, is 11.5. So that's 11.5 versus AP rounds. 11.5 is not going to save you, but if we take this versus HE and HEI, you can see that that's 2. So that's 14 millimeters of armor versus HEI rounds, or high explosive rounds. So when you're blazing away with your thing, oh, so this actually has fairly, it has a unique type of armor. It has no armor, but it has a unique type from Cataloy. I'm not sure if any other vehicle gets that. If we go to the T-62, I think this one has unique. No, this one just has steel. So, we'll go to the Centuro. The Centuro has a... It just has steel. But... But... There, I'll show you. This is the regular armor on the Centuro. It's just steel. It's not very poor steel armor, but as an armor upgrade, rumor, era, and applique. And as you can see, it changes the model. You have more armor around the turrets and around the sides. And you, and now read that. It's rumor, era, and applique. There. I'll s the stock armor because it says the upgrades. You go up 15 in hull armor, up 15 on the sides and rear, it looks like. And then era modifiers are times 2. It's only light era, so it's only going to protect you versus heat. So now when you put this on, in the era, in the places that the era went on, right here, on here, along the turret, that gives you better protection versus heat. Not that it's going to matter, because most people in top tiers don't think about their ammo, and they just fire AP at everything. And then there's some other... wait, I did, there's, there's other things too. If we go to details, military aluminum. Aluminum is a weak metal. Even this military aluminum, ha look, it has 9. See this point nine? That's less than 1 to 1, so that's actually less armor than 12 versus uh, every type of round. Because if you take 12 times 0.90, I think, 12 times 0.90 equals 10. 0.8. So you actually have less armor than advertised because it's made out of aluminum. Uh, what else? Is there any... I mean, and you, you'll... And there's even more types of armor as you go up. What's a good vehicle? Yeah. You. This the striker gets a thing called cage armor. Cage and passive applique. Cage armor. These are both pretty much more heat types of armor. But cage armor just looks like a cage. It looks like chicken wiring, but put over the vehicle. It's made to break up heat rounds and cause them to have it's, it's made to detonate the heat before it gets in before it hits the vehicle basically the heat round comes in it hits the wiring and causes it to not have as much and more space between the heat the heat and the vehicle so it's sort of like it it's like a type of space armor that's useless versus ap but all versus heat so, eh, frame drop. Don't know why that's occurring, but uh, we'll try to get through this. Is there any other vehicles? Yes, there is. The M60A3 gets gets era, and this is a this is a light era, but it, it's a very good light era. It will protect. It will, I believe, protect it versus AP rounds right now. I'm not sure if they're gonna continue that, and then. You know, it's an M60, but it adds more armor. It's air armor. It will block shots, but only 
for a limited number. Like once that you shoot an arrow block, it's it's this it's eliminated. That arrow no longer exists right there. And then we get to the Abrams. The M1 Abrams. The M1 Abrams has composite armor. Composite armor is better than steel. See, as you can see, the modifiers are a lot. Hull armor is 260, but with the hull modifier, it's one point. It's one point five five. So if we take one sixty, it was. Oh, two sixty. Two sixty. Clear. If you take two sixty times. Take two sixty times one point five five. One point five five equals 403 millimeters of armor on the front for AP rounds. Same with um, HE and it's, it has a two, 270 upgrade versus heat. So if you take 260, 260 times 2.70 that is 702 millimeters of effective armor versus heat. Do not fire heat at tanks with composite armor. Also, do not fire heat at tanks with era. Era will block heat. Now, I'm not... Now, there's another unique type of armor on the M1 Abram Abrams. Depleted uranium composite. This has a lot of modifiers compared to the M1 Abrams stock armor. Which is better than that. Now... There's also tusk, era, and cage, so this gives it even better heat and era protection. You know, you know, woo, there's tons of types of armor in this game. It's like, what do I shoot? Well, I'll I'll justify it at the, I'll round everything up at the beginning, uh, or at the end, not the beginning. Is there any other tanks with unique evolution? Oh. The Leopard 2 series has a unique type of um, armor, layered steel composite, which is very good versus um, AP rounds. And oh, it's all right versus AP rounds. It gives a modifier of 1.50, but again, is main purpose is to defend against heat, which is 2.50 more armor. So. It has a very good. See that? Or see that? It adds um. Hull armor it has it adds a lot. And we get to the Leopard 2A5, which just has regular composite armor, because the stock Leopard 2 has layered steel composite, and the Evolution Applique is even more layered steel composite. So, and we go back to the dealers. We'll go back to. We already went to these. We'll go now we'll talk about the tank the Russian tanks starting at the T sixty four and above. T sixty four and above have not upgrades. I mean they do have upgrades, but that's not what we're looking at. Details. Steel with fiberglass composite. What this is is better. This armor is basically steel plates with fiberglass in between them. And you're thinking, why would they do that? Why would you put fiberglass on a tank? Well, because the fiberglass actually protects versus heat fairly well. But it gives you actually less armor versus AP. So if you take the hull armor of 205 and times it by 0.80... Uh, let's do that. What was it? 100 and 205. 205 times by 0.80 equals you actually only have 164 millimeters of armor on the front versus AP rounds. So you have less armor. I mean, that's still good armor, but if someone fires heat at you, you take 205 and times it by 1.50 you have, you have 300 and 7 millimeters versus heat. So you have fairly good armor on your hull versus heat. Now its turret has another type of armor. Steel with aluminum inserts. 
you have, again, it's less than 1, so you actually have less armor than 320 on the turret. So, as you can see, 320, 320 times 0.95 equals, you only have 304, which isn't that bad, but as you can see, it's better versus heat and does nothing versus HE. It's basically the same, 1 to 1. And then we upgrade to the T72. It has layered steel composite. This is basically an improvement on the T64's armor. See, this is steel with fiberglass composite. The T72 on its hull has layered steel composite. Layered steel composite, as you can see, is very effective. Especially at tier 5, having 1.5 1.5 and 2.50 modifiers. And then its turret has another type of armor, Kvarts and Steel, which seems to be fairly... it's it's alright. It's got higher than 1 to 1, especially versus Heat. In 1.65 at Tier 5, it's very fairly good. Another thing with the T72 is you get a turret applique armor, which braces the turret protection. We go back to the dealers. We'll go to the chieftain. We'll go. We'll go there in a minute. We're gonna do the Russian line. I already looked at you. T72A has again layered steel composite. 1.5, 1.5, 2.50. Is that about what it was on here? It's about the same with the T72. Gets contact one era. It's still light era, which is not not the best era, but it will protect you versus heat, and some AP rounds. It doesn't really do anything versus AG. At least right now, because the way they have AG set up is AG always does damage. Same as the T80, steel layered composite. Russians really like this steel layered composite armor. And as you can see, the turrets of the T of these vehicles, this is just composite armor now. It has a much higher um, effect, because they got rid of the Deal with aluminum inserts after the it should be after the T64, right? Kfar yeah, because they got after they got rid of the steel aluminum inserts, and now we get to the T90, which has regular composite. It actually has it, it, you actually have a type of era already installed on the vehicle along here, and under that is composite. So you're adding armor on top of whenever you get an armor upgraded. So you have and then on its turret, it has non-explosive reactive armor, which is basically react like react explosive reactive armor, except it doesn't explode. And it has a pretty good modifier, doesn't it? Yeah, 1.5, 1.5, and 2.5. Oh, so you have fairly good armor. Now we get to the chieftain with its rolled plate armor. Chieftain's armor is very effective for tier 5, or it should be, at least not that, at least, uh, yeah, it should be, now, it, as you can see, it has 100, and you also have to take into account sloping with these, with armor too, so it's not just about the composite and, and the whole, there's a lot going on here in terms of, uh, armor, and, and ammo, because you're thinking, oh, it's only 100 millimeters, even if you times that by 1.50, 100, times 1.50 oh, equals 150. So you're like, oh, it's only 150 millimeters of armor with the modifier. But actually at the slope, the Chieftain's effective armor is somewhere around three to 400, which is fairly decent. Same with its turret. It has, you have to account in sloping. And then the upgrade, oh, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want that. Didn't care what it's upgrade, I wanted this one. It's upgrade, it gets a very unique type of armor, Steel Brew. Steel Brew is basically just adding on sort of more steel. But in real life, it was kind of, it was steel layered with rubber, which is what they tried. And I think it worked fairly well on the turret. I'm not sure. It's a fairly unique type, and, only, and it's really weird because it only covers part of the turret, not the entire thing, like most tanks. And we get to the Challenger 1, which has composite, again, 1.5 modifiers and 270 versus heat. 
as you can see, gives it extremely effective hull armor, at least in its strongest spots. If we take 355 times 1... 355 times... What was it? 1.55? Yes. Times 1.55. We can see that is 550 effective armor. Versus AP rounds. And versus heat. 355 times 70. That is 958 versus heat. Do not fire heat at a Challenger 1. That's all I'm going to tell you. And it gets applique era and mark three era and applique armor. It's composite and basically adds even more armor on the Challenger one. I'm pretty sure the era or the yes. yeah. This just has composite like all the other ones. Most NATO tanks all have composite armor. PSO applique composite armor. Now, I think this. Yes, here is the Sheridan. The Sheridan is actually fairly unique because its hull armor is aluminum, which is f very weak. It has extremely weak hull armor, and its turret armor is steel. So, and it doesn't have very good turret armor. I just wanted to show that Sheridan has very weird armor for tier four as having very weak hull armor and very interesting uh, regular turret armor. Is there anyone here? Details? Steel, steel, stingray, I think you have... Cataloy steel, yep. So, stingray has cataloy steel. As you can see, it's fairly effective. Even though it only has 35 and 40, you actually have fairly good versus HP and heat. And I think you have an upgrade. You're the one with the upgrade? Yes, you get more applique armor. You get more catalyst steel armor. I think that's it. I think that's all the unique types of armor. Hmm. I think, right? Nothing. Steel, steel, yeah, nothing there. Beyond. Steel, Fox, Swing Fire, and, you know, there's probably going to be even more types of armor in the future. Now, we haven't even gotten into ATGMs yet, which are basically heat. They're basically guided. Most most missiles are going to be heat. You're going to have a few odd ones. Like, there was some experimentation with a Hesh missile, and the, I believe the Ramka gets thermobaric missiles which are e basically HE missiles so yeah now we'll talk about which ammo to use when in the general sense of things we'll start all right so we'll start with the t54 as it has regular mainly regular types of stuff fire ap rounds to penetrate AP rounds are your general purpose rounds. Basically, you can mainly fire this at everything and do fairly well. AP, AP FTS, AP CR, AP HVAP. All your common AP rounds are things. Now, this is what you fire at heavy, heavily armored vehicles and at weak spots and stuff. Well, not, not really. Sometimes. There's a lot of complication going here, and going over a general thing, I would have to go over each individual vehicle and say what, when, if this is good to fire each yet, and which rounds to fire when at this vehicle and when not to, and where to fire. Then, heat. Where should you use heat? As I said, main on vehicles with flat armor, like the T-54 here. You can fire heat, even though I would recommend firing AP at it. Heat would work, but another very good use for heat is at lightly armored vehicles. Why? You're thinking, why wouldn't I fire AP? Well, because you can get something called a pass-through. And pass-through is that when a round goes through something without hitting anything. It just went through the vehicle without hitting anything internally. You're thinking, what? How does that work? Well, 
you imagine you have your car and someone shot through the window, through the back window. Your car's not technically damaged. It still could drive, right? Same thing with that. <laughs> but with the heat round, basically, heat shoots a bunch of jets out, so it can't technically pass through. I think there's a glitch now where it sometimes can. But you fire these at, um, lightly armored vehicles and places where, like, and, and in, in some cases, like the Ramka and the Terminator, their turrets take less damage because there's no crew members in there. So firing heat, because heat does more damage, will would be a better choice. So fire heat at things without armor and things with flat armor. But heat can get eaten up by tracks and spaced armor and other types of armor very easily. So don't fire heat at... Basically, fire heat at things that are... A have no armor, B, have flat armor, flat armor that is not composite or layered steel or any of the other types of armor I went over that have better effectiveness versus HE, or versus heat. Now, when to fire HE, and that goes for this HE also. When to fire HE? Well, since HE technically always does damage, but it will, armors do reduce that damage, I think. But armor, but since it will always do damage, you can fire HE whenever you want, but if you want to make the most use out of it, fire it at vehicles that have no armor. Vehicles that have no armor, but fire it at vehicles that have no armor, but have anti-heat armor. Like the Sincero. Fire AG at the Zinchero. Sides. Because this will block heat. For a little bit. Then when to shoot Hash. When to shoot Hash. Whenever you want to kill somebody's crew and modules. Especially in the Ramka. Shoot, shoot Hash at Ramka. And Terminator. Basically the same as AG. Basically, shoot H E, shoot hash at anything you would shoot H E at. I think we know over the gist of it. I mean, there's a lot to cover, and yeah, I can go over each individual little spot. And yeah, you know, we didn't even get to artillery, which artillery has special rounds. Yeah, the artillery has smoke and illumination rounds. They also have V lap H E, and Russians have H E frag and. There's AG rocket assisted, which is supposed to make the round go faster than regular AG, or carry it longer. I forget what it was, but as you can see, there is a lot of different types of ammo and armor in Armored Warfare, and there's only going to get more as time goes on, because you know there's a there was a lot of experimentation with different types of rounds and armor, and you know, who knows what else there's gonna be. I mean... Look at, uh... There's a Japanese tank. A type something. It's modern. It has... Di uh, crystal nano steel armor. You're thinking, what's that? It's basically a fancy type of steel. That's supposed to be s stronger yet more brittle. I think it's just a fancy way to say cast iron. But yeah, that's just the gist of things. That's, that's, this was a simple overview. I could go into even more depth of weak spots, what things, what, what to fire at weak spots, what not to fire at weak spots. There's, there's a lot to go over in Armored Warfare. Think, don't think of this game as World of Tanks. World of Tanks is incredibly simple compared to this. Think of this game more as War Thunder with hit points. And more armor. Because types of armor don't matter in Armored Warfare, except for spaced and regular. But rounds matter more in War Thunder. The thing about armor not mattering in War Thunder is that they don't show the difference between welded steel and riveted steel. Riveted steel, basically, whenever you shoot steel that's been riveted on, basically when you shoot it, all the rivets should shoot out too. So yeah, gonna end that there. And now I'm gonna start on another video showcasing some of these vehicles I bought.
Because why not? 